नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू सर प्रज्ञा चैनल एंड यू आर वाचिंग एडब्ल्यूएस डेटा एनालिटिक्स प्रोजेक्ट्स और एडब्ल्यूएस क्लाउड प्रोजेक्ट्स फॉर बिगिनर्स इफ दिस इज योर फर्स्ट वीडियो एंड इफ यू आर अ बिगिनर आई वुड रेकमेंड यू टू गो एंड वॉच द अदर प्लेलिस्ट दैट वी हैव नॉट अदर बट वन मोर प्लेलिस्ट वी हैव व्हिच इज एडब्ल्यूएस क्लाउड क्वेस्ट बिकॉज़ दिस इज लाइक सीजन 3 आई हैव सीजन 1 एंड 2 व्हिच आर 24 more projects that we did but they are not part of this playlist instead they are part of other playlist which is aws cloud quest go watch from the first project if you are completely new to aws just because this is considered i mean this is 25th or 26th project right so if you jump immediately into 26th project you might not grab all the um, knowledge or skills or tools that we use in this project so i would recommend you to go watch from project 1 if if you are completely new or if you are looking towards some advanced projects then you can continue watching this so in this project what are we going to do okay so let's go ahead and click our mobile and we are going to do a project related to data lakes now let's go okay here we are and if this is your first video or second video and if your goal is to learn about aws services and want to know how these services are used in real time projects first i would recommend you to go watch uh, the aws tutorials for beginners videos they are very short videos you know max you will have a particular video maybe 5 minutes that's it so you we have videos for several topics i would recommend you to go watch that that will give you theoretical knowledge on different services and then we have as i mentioned aws cloud quest playlist in that we have 24 projects starting from cloud practitioner then solution architect so that's how your um, path should be you need to watch the 12 projects uh, that are uh, provided in that playlist as cloud practitioner those are beginner ones and then there were there are other you know more 12 projects in the solutions architect path and then come here if you follow this trust me you are going to gain lot of knowledge by the time you finish all these projects watching doing some of them you can do cloud practitioner to all projects you can do which is free cloud quest is free for uh, cloud practitioner role not for the other <laughs> i mentioned this in other videos as well so once you finish watching the tutorials for beginners videos and then these projects trust me you can just put blindly 2 3 experience on aws technologies because technically this is what we do in uh, real projects so watch it multiple times so because by doing it you will gain more knowledge than watching it but you have to spend some money to do this lab so watch it multiple times until you get used to it All right. Let's look at this current uh, this project. Okay, what is their problem? Let's see. Hello, I am the data storage administrator for the Islands Premier e-commerce store. Thanks for coming. Glad to be here. Is there something I can help you with? We have noticed a high amount of customers abandoning certain products in their shipping cart, shopping cart, on a consistent basis. This causes us to have to delete those records from our database to save storage space. The IT manager asked me to find a cost-effective storage solution to store these records. On top of that, we want to run an analysis on this data to summarize which products are being abandoned at the highest rate, so that we can offer a discount to our customers to increase sales. Would you be able to help? Absolutely. You can create a data lake in Amazon S3 as your storage solution. From there, you can create a backend application to export the abandoned records into S3. A second data processor application will read the records, aggregate them, and write the aggregated data to the data lake. For the discount, you can create a promotions application that will further aggregate and sort the data to help you identify the top products being abandoned by each customer. Wow, there is a lot to unpack there. First, what is a data lake and how does it work on Amazon S3? Sorry, I got excited. A data lake is a centralized repository. that you can use to store all your structured and unstructured data at any scale you can store your data as is and run different types of analytics on it to guide better decisions 
Amazon S3 is optimal for data lake because of its virtually unlimited scalability and high durability. S3 also integrates with AWS Lambda. You can process event notifications from S3 through Lambda, such as when an object is created or deleted from a bucket. That's interesting. So our applications can be invoked through these event notifications? Exactly. You can create an event notification on an S3 bucket to invoke a Lambda function whenever an object is created in the bucket. Alternatively, you can send events to Amazon Event Bridge whenever certain events happen in your bucket. Event Bridge can then invoke your Lambda function. I like it. I will get my team to create the required application so we can get started. With your help, we can build our first data lake. Can you show me the steps involved in building this solution? Sure, definitely. So what are the learning objectives? So once we finish doing this project, what are we going to learn? That is important. So we are going to use S3 as the data lake storage layer. Then we will configure an event notification to invoke a Lambda function. Then we will configure Amazon event bridge to invoke a Lambda function. Okay, that is nice. And what are the rewards that we are going to get? Usual plus 10 Lambda plus 10 S3. All right, let's accept this. Excellent, let's get started. All right, now we know this is going to take us to our lab. And as you can see, this is our lab section. And as usual, we'll have the video concepts here. I will click here. Go ahead and watch them. As I mentioned earlier, these I won't play the videos here. Instead, they are part of another playlist, which is called AWS Tutorials for Beginners. You can find the videos with the same title. Watch them, come back, and continue watching this video. Okay, guess what? I went till step 40 and then realized that I had my recording paused. So now I had to come back to step 1 and then redo the redo all the 40 steps. That's okay. I will do it again for you guys because it was a mistake done by me. So I have to close these things. Okay, let's go here. Let's go delete this. Sometimes it is frustrating, you know. I almost recorded about 40 minutes of the 40 minutes and then now uh, I don't have delete permissions. Awesome. That's fine. Then we'll leave. Okay. So let's go back and let's do this from the beginning. So let's go here. So we are going to go to S3. We all know what S3 is. So I'm not going to explain. You can pause and read through this. It is just explaining uh, what this does. So we are going to create a bucket. Again, we are going to create a raw bucket first. Okay, and read through the raw zone, what it means and etc. Pause it and read it. And then we are going to create bucket with SSE S3, server side encryption, the default encryption. You don't have to provide any keys. So that we are going to create. And we are going to create another bucket to store the aggregated data which we are going to call consumed a bucket okay so now you will have raw bucket and consume bucket i think i cannot create with the same name so i went ahead and created it with these names so i have two buckets and initially both buckets should be empty and then we are going to go click the properties and then we are going to enable the events right whenever we want um, whenever a file is actually created or added to the bucket we want it to do something else so those are called events so we are going to create an event and we'll name it processor event and we are only going to choose put there are several event types on s3 but we are we only care about put when a file is put what do you want to do again you need to create a selected destination in our case it is a lambda function and that lambda function is data process so what we are saying is when we put a file in raw bucket we want it to trigger this lambda function okay and once you create it again at the same time we want to also uh, enable the uh, event bridge unlike the event notification event bridge we don't need to select events it will be for all events either you turn it off or off that's how it works so we will go ahead and turn it on 
okay so once you do that we are going to check out the lambda function which is the data generator as the name suggests it generates random data they are going to use you know this fake um, method or package python package fake it's a python package that generates random data and what this does is it will generate the data and it puts the file in the raw bucket okay and in order to do that actually the bucket name is created as an environment variable okay read what an environment variable is but when will you create environment variables well if you hard code the bucket in the code when you move from dev to pro or dev to qa and qa to prod your buckets change so you don't want to change your code and replace the qa bucket and prod bucket instead you will create environment variables so what are the probable scenarios you might be whenever you think a certain value changes between dev qa and prod then you will consider them to create as a variables environment variables so when you create it like that you don't have to change anything when this code goes to qa whatever values you pass you can pass it to the lambda okay then we will edit and change that and the value we are going to give is raw bucket that's it once you create that we are going to test this to test a lambda what do we need we need a test event it needs sometimes if the function needs input data this is the place where you will pass it but this particular lambda it won't take any input so you can remove this and pass an empty one that's fine then you will click on test and then the data, data will be generated like this and it will also write the file to our raw bucket s3 which is what they are showing us here and it will go and put it you can download it using that and now there is the data processor so we put the file in that but this is the one that aggregates the data so they are showing us in by going to code they are talking about pandas that's what they used so basically what this lambda function does is it will read or download the file from the raw bucket into temp folder and then it is going to use pandas to group by or do whatever aggregation it needs to do after that it is going to put that in that temp direct file aggregated data then it will up to upload it to the consume bucket that's all this lambda does but along with that wh what it does is if you see the trigger here right which is s3 which means this lambda is triggered using this particular s3 event you remember we created an event and selected this as the destination right that's what created this one and uh, again it has two environment variables which will change our input bucket is the raw bucket output bucket is the consume bucket once we did that we will go again to generator okay previously when we ran it have just created the file but it didn't trigger the um, data processor you might be thinking it didn't tr trigger it but it did trigger it but since we didn't change the environment variable of input bucket output bucket it down didn't do anything now we change that so now when we test it it should go ahead and uh, create another file in raw bucket and also trigger the uh, aggregate process and it should put a file in the consume bucket as well which they are showing right here which you can see here so this is till here i came and i realized that i paused my recording but no worries i will show everything again so creating the bucket create bucket give the name you need to choose the region in this exercise or we are we are not changing anything click create that's how i created these two buckets once we are here we need to enable the notifications so we'll go to properties we'll scroll down you will have the notifications so you will click on create event notifications give the event name don't give anything and we are only going to use put we have several events on s3 bucket but that's all we care about then we will choose lambda choose from your lambda then we'll go and choose our data processor save changes then it will create the event and uh, similarly you can enable event bridge from here click event bridge click on save changes then we are good now let's go to the functions lambda functions the data generator which is what generates the data okay if i click on here lambda handler is the function that gets triggered when you run the lambda and whatever is under it gets triggered 
event is the input event we are sending or the input parameters we are sending context you can access it this will have things like aws uh, ide etc but in this we are not using it but what is this one triggering first it is generating running the function call generate data which is this one and this is using the faker module and creating five columns with some random data and writing it to temp diris directory then you are uploading you are using the upload file function and what this function does all it does is it will use the s3 kaboto s3 client and it will upload the file to your bucket with the object name you want but we need to test this in order to test this you are actually going to create test events you can click create test event give whatever name you want dummy 2 because i already created one since this doesn't require any input you can remove and pass an empty one that's fine that's totally fine and when you click test it will run it it will generate some random data and at the same time it will also upload the file to s3 how do i know if it uploaded or not i can go back to my bucket here open this and if i refresh this you can see this is the actually current time uh, i can confirm you that it just created it okay and since i already told you i ran this already you will see this one file as well but you can see it already created it the reason is i already went ahead and uh, modified the buckets for the other lambda function as well okay let's go to the other function which is the processor so if you see this gets triggered automatically by the s3 event which is what you can see here as i showed you earlier it will download the file then it will process it then will upload it that's all it does and if we go to where environment variables forgot to tell you so i already changed this that's why that file got successfully created in here you can edit it add key and values as many as you want okay i hope so far you are with me on this i might have went a little bit quicker uh, faster than the last time but basically that's all i did so if i go back here now let's go to event bridge then click create a role and we are going to name it promotion app and then the role with an event pattern go ahead and read that and then you can click next and here what are what is that event pattern it is a iws service and the service here is s3 and it is a s3 event notification it is going to create as this pattern automatically there and here we are selecting use pattern from before going further let's see promotion app let me remember that so let's go back to do we do we do it from here okay event bridge create a rule oops not that one this one promotion app this is default and we are going to rule with an event pattern not a schedule okay schedule in the sense you want it to run at a particular time particular day particular year month etc which is not what we want we want it to be triggered when there is an event and uh, is it aws event yes it is and uh, what is it s3 object and it is actually everything right let's see why is it all events enter my own this i looks like it changed but what i am trying to see is s3 there are so many s3 s services Okay, S3 we have so many I think it is created I don't know it should not be like this it should be not like this maybe it changed okay right if you see we don't see this at all right 
role with an event pattern yes that's what we selected then it's saying creation method use pattern from which we don't have and even this we don't have it anymore <laughs> that's weird right or did i do anything wrong it says other how about this and is, is it uh, it's saying s3 event notification hmm. that's weird how can they completely oh we have it here never mind but why is what is this event source is there event source is aws services never mind event services is s3 event source is aws events okay this is optional never mind use pattern services s3 okay s3 and this is notification okay we have it there cool okay and then we are going to select specific event which is object created and that is the bucket where where you know which bucket that object is whenever is created and you wanted to do that so we will say specific event and we are going to select object created and then we are going to say specific bucket and it is going to be raw bucket this one i think pretty much that's it we should be good to go then what do you want to do obviously the target is we want to create a lambda function and that lambda function is promotion app then next then you can add tags then you can review the pattern and then scroll down and create it i think pretty much that's it now you have the promotion app lambda function and we can go ahead and review the code and you can read the amazon event bridge by pausing this video okay i can review it when we go there so let's click this next and the target is aws services and we said it's a lambda function and it's going to be promotion app and next tags next you can review it s3 object created and the bucket and create the role and the role is created successfully oh we need to review the code right forgot about it let's go here promotion app and as you have guessed the trigger type is which what triggers this lambda function event bridge event will for the previous one um, lambda will but for this sorry s3 event for this one event bridge event triggers it that's why it is that similar even this one is downloading up processing uploading i think it is the same uh, one okay cool now let's go back okay you can look at this review it and oh, we have to change these variables again we are going to put raw bucket consume bucket good we'll go then we'll go data generator now test it it will put the file then in the consume bucket it will have the promotion data created as well you can download it and view it if you want but i think we are good congratulations we are done okay this one is a simple one at least but it is showing us how these different things work hand in hand so that being said this is done so let's go back to this one and let's go to configuration variables let's replace this okay raw bucket 3157 consume let's save it okay we are done let's go back so once we run this what does this do it will put the file in raw bucket and then 
that put event uh, is actually going to create uh, trigger the processor lambda and at the same time the event bridge is going to trigger the uh, promotion app and going to put that file as well so let's go ahead and test this two things are going to happen right so we need to see two files created in the consume bucket okay successfully done let's go okay i think here let's click on s3 let's look at the timestamp based on the timestamps we will make sure if it actually created in the other one or not so raw bucket yes what time if you see 323 so with that same time there should be two files in here yes there are 223 223 we got the aggregated data which is triggered by the s3 event the respective lambda and this got triggered by the event bridge event and created it so we successfully have two files that is the end of our practice lab now let's go do our diy let's see if it is going to be complicated or easy what are we going to do we are going to create a second event bridge rule to invoke the lambda function diy processor straightforward update the diy processor lambda environment variables with the s3 bucket names created in the lab invoke the data generator lambda function and verify that a new csv file was created in the consumption zone s3 bucket okay so pretty much it's straightforward i would say it's just we are going to create a i think we already have this name right we can just give it just to show that this doesn't work because i think they will go i'm assuming they are going to check a different file i think the diy processor will put a different file just to make sure that this actually fails because we didn't yet do it right let's see i don't know which bucket uh, file it is going to check if it checks with yeah you see this that function isn't triggered so this actually works it's not like they just put it for the sake of it so we are going to go and actually run that and create the rule and run it then i will come and do the validation and which should work so let's go here i think here create a new rule and we can call this as diy promotion app okay let's click next i think we scroll down and we are going to select s3 and then here we are going to select event notifications again the same thing specific event object create but the bucket is going to be the same bucket okay but the target is going to be different now right because we are not going to trigger the other one instead we are going to trigger the diy processor instead of the other one so click next next pretty much the same nothing changed that's it then let's go to this one again now if i run this it should create three files in that bucket okay let me go back to here if i refresh this what it's still showing the promotion oh yeah i know why do you guys know why it didn't create the other file can someone catch that before i show it yeah we need to update the variables that's what that's why we need to be patient okay let's go put that here put that here let's change this to consume save it now let's go to the generator now if i run this it should definitely create three files if it doesn't then i will be really mad okay still didn't create it okay now it created it took it took some time but that's fine as you can see we have three this created by diy this promotion so now if i go and validate it i think this should work 
I think it is just ch checking if that file exists in this or not. Okay, all as you can see, we successfully went ahead. They actually gave some ins, but I think we are good, right? All right, I hope you followed with me on this and um, I hope you don't have any confusion and after watching this, you should be able to successfully create event bridge events and S3 events and link them and make them trigger Lambda functions. If the solution is complete. Let me know how I can get one of those promotional discounts. <laughs> Thank you for your help. I have something better than a discount. Choose a reward as a token of your appreciation. Uh, which one should we pick? I think this one. Let's go with this. It has a spaceship kind of. All right. Okay. So that finished the lab. Now let's go to our next part. The next part is we leveled up. That is good. And my builder level also increased to 15. And it's time for feedback. And I liked it, so I will give five stars. And it is time for you to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. And hit that like, share, and comment buttons. I really appreciate you doing so and all your support. Thank you very much. Go ahead, do it. Now let's go to our second step, which is zapping the drones. So let's see what do we have here. All right, okay, it is right in front of me. Okay, Amazon S3 event notifications feature can be used to receive notifications when certain events occur in an S3 bucket. Which destination can Amazon S3 send event notification messages to? I think I remember this, we did this and I think when I was doing it, I checked, I think it's the other two as well and it is correct and let's see uh, do i have anything okay they are far away let's hope it is not that far which service does a data lake built on AWS use as its primary storage solution. We already know which is S3, which we just used. I got a RDS read replica, which is nice. By default, S3 versioning is disabled on buckets and it must be explicitly enabled. Yes, that is true. It is disabled on buckets by default. Yes, nice. I got a Lambda card. Which architectural approach can be used to store all data, including structured, unstructured in a centralized repository so that it can be categorized, catalogued, sourced, and analyzed? Which is actually this is what we just did obviously we won't miss it so it's the data lake which AWS service can be used with S3 event notifications to write rules that take actions when an event occurs in S3 bucket what do you guys think as soon as you see this to write rules, rules is what event bridge. So we just did it as well. So we already know the answer for that. Which statements about the scan operation in DynamoDB are correct? This is our previous project, which means we are almost, we are almost, not almost, we are done with the questions for this one. So let's do this. What? Remember the previous project, what is scan? When you scan, scan happens first, the filters happen after that. So, consumes the same amount of read capacity when a filter expression is present. Yes, that is true. Because filter is applied after scan finishes. So, it still uh, does the same thing. Scan consumes more read capacity when a filter expression. No, it doesn't. Applied, filter expression is applied after a scan finishes. Oh, there are two. I almost selected this. So, 
this is true as well okay so we received another one i think we are done here because that previous one was dynamo db which is our previous uh, project as when we receive questions like that we know that we are out of our questions and i think that will be the end of this particular project i hope you learned something i hope you liked it if so go ahead and subscribe and also if you want to contribute to this channel you can become a member or you know you can give a super like or you know you there are different ways you can support this channel and thank you very much have a nice day see you in the next video peace out